valvetime.net. Hi, and welcome to a Valve Time Spotlight. In this episode, we'll be talking about a series of eight recently discovered images of model renders taken from the cancelled Half-Life 2 Episode 4 project, also known as Return to Ravenholm, a spin-off title which was being developed by Arcane Studios until production was cancelled by Valve sometime around 2007 or 2008. You might remember back in January of this year when we uploaded a short video highlighting a pair of screenshots taken from a pre-alpha build of the game dating sometime around 2007. The previously discovered images led us to believe that the project was scrapped relatively early on in its development, as the screenshots only gave an impression of basic prototype levels with little polish and practically no new content. However, these new images suggest that the development of the title was further down the production pipeline than we originally thought, as they consist entirely of final renders of original 3D models set to be used in the game. Models of this type and quality would usually only be developed late in the game's production, most likely around the same time much of the level design was being organized. We've decided to take a quick look at the discovered images in order to try to get a more in-depth look at what was supposed to happen in the now long-dead spin-off. It should be noted that the images we are about to show have not been significantly edited by us in any way, only to add a watermark. Almost all the images already featured modeling and texture data in one corner and copyright 2007 to 2008 Arcane Studios in another. The first few images show a large industrial truck, which appears aesthetically similar to the ones from Half-Life 2's Highway 17 chapter. What is particularly interesting about this vehicle, however, is the truck appears to be largely intact, unlike so many of the other vehicles shown in the series. All four of the truck's wheels are intact and inflated, and the chassis also appears relatively undamaged, although a little rusted, which is strange when you consider that vehicles like this wouldn't have been in use for upwards of two decades at the time of Half-Life 2. The high triangle count shown at the top of the main leaked image hints that the player may have had to interact closely with this model at some time. The truck's appearance is particularly odd as Ravenholm was originally set to appear as the game's primary setting and, in Half-Life 2 at least, features mainly small walkways and paths which appear unsuitable for vehicles of any kind. Was this truck set to be a drivable vehicle? Was it to appear on Highway 17 as the protagonist travels towards Ravenholm? While we don't have answers to either of these questions, we do know that the truck's level of repair is unusual compared to the general condition of heavy equipment seen in Half-Life 2. The next image shows a small green handcart, which, similar to the aforementioned truck, appears oddly intact and functioning, unlike most of the technology seen in City 17 and its surrounding areas. The relatively low triangle count suggests that this prop was likely less important than some of the other models shown in these images. Unfortunately, the leaked image provides a little insight into how this prop would be used or where it would appear, but it is highly likely it was simply a generic model set to appear multiple times in various locations throughout the game. This fourth image is where things start to get interesting. With around 3,400 triangles and such a small model, this scientific apparatus appears extremely important, as we assume only a model which has to be interacted with at close range would require such a high-quality model. Given Half-Life's emphasis on puzzle solving, we imagine that this apparatus was possibly part of some larger puzzle sequence in a hospital-like environment. A hospital locale was shown in the previously leaked screenshots as seen here, hinting that at least part of the game was to take place in a claustrophobic medical facility somewhere in or around Ravenholm. However, as we are never shown a hospital during our visit to Ravenholm in Half-Life 2, nor is it suggested that such a facility even exists, possibly hinting that the town is actually a lot larger and more varied than is suggested. We're not entirely sure how this kind of apparatus is supposed to function, so if anyone watching has any idea, please let us know in the comments below. The hospital theme continues for the remaining images, including this next shot which appears to be some kind of medical refrigerator, which are commonly found in labs and hospital diagnostic facilities. The keypad lock on the front and the large door suggests that whatever was kept in this cabinet was important and not to be tampered with. While there isn't much else to say about this image, we did notice some kind of intended continuity regarding this image and the previously shown apparatus. Both pieces of equipment feature the same logo somewhere near the base, and while we're not exactly sure what it means, we know that the image's inclusion on both models is far from a simple coincidence, and is more likely related to some kind of corporation, organization, or location within the narrative. However, whether or not this was going to be particularly important to the overall plot remains to be seen. The final three images are not quite as impressive, showing a set of industrial shelves, a wet floor sign, a fire extinguisher, and an old wet cleaning mop. While these three images are not very interesting individually, they do reinforce our previously mentioned location theme as all four models are objects one might typically find in a busy public place such as a hospital or medical facility. 
The wet floor sign features text in Cyrillic, indicating an Eastern European language, which demonstrates that the locations set to appear in Episode 4 were consistent with those that appear in Half-Life 2 and the other episodes, as City 17 and the surrounding areas are believed to be located somewhere in Eastern Europe. The same language also appears on several other images, including the refrigerator logo and the truck license plate. While we were initially curious why the fire extinguisher features entirely English instructions and titles, the Kitty brand, which appears on the side of the model, is actually a real brand of fire extinguishers, meaning the model currently shown on screen is likely a placeholder texture used to match the model to the real-world counterpart. We should remind everyone that the Return to Ravenholm project is still most likely as dead as the zombies previously set to appear in it, so don't get your hopes up for any further news regarding this particular project, but we can at least hope Valve will have something to say about the future of Half-Life sometime soon. If you've enjoyed this particular Spotlight video, then you'll want to check out our previous Half-Life 2 Episode 4 episode in which we gave a brief look at the never-before-seen screenshots and animations intended for use in the Arcane Studios Half-Life spin-off. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more Valve Time videos, news, and reviews coming soon. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.